Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jules and welcome back to my channel and for any of the newcomers, welcome to my channel. Just to give you a little bit of background on myself, I have lost over 50 pounds, gained muscle and strength, did that over the course of about a year with the assist of a GLP-1, uh, which is Ozempic, Wagovi, Mangerno, Zepbound, those are all GLP-1s. And you might be wondering, well, what the heck is the difference between Ozempic and Mangerno? And I'm gonna break that down for you today. What's the mechanisms? What are the pros and cons? The fat loss rate, the cost, the whole nine yards. So at the end of this, you're gonna know what the differences are, what you might wanna choose if, if you do have that choice which will help you in your journey. All right, to start with, Ozempic, Wagovi, those are the same things. Ozempic is geared towards diabetics. Wagovi, same ingredients, targeted for fat loss. And then you have Mangerno, which is the is terzeptide, that is targeted towards diabetics. And Zepbound, again, same ingredient, terzeptide, that is targeted for weight loss. Um, so the first one, which is the Ozempic and Wagovi, is a, uh, a singular agonist, it's GLP-1. And the other one, the terzepatide, is a dual agonist. And that is made up of two hormones that it targets. That targets. So it's made up of GLP-1 and it's made up of GIP. So it acts on two incretin hormones. The Ozempic and Wagovi were developed first and the Mangerno, the uh, Zepbound, were developed and marketed after. So it's the, the newest generation of GLP uh, peptides. So it's really, a, these are really peptides. They act on naturally occurring hormones in our body. So we make these hormones, but the problem is they last for literally minutes when they're released. And by taking an exogenous peptide, which means you're, you're injecting this peptide into you, they've been able to tweak it so that it can last about a week and instead of a few minutes. Now, the mechanism of action between both of them is they do help to reduce your appetite. They slow down gastric emptying, so they make you feel full for a lot longer. And which, it of course, will help you to eat less. And when you're eating less and taking in less calories, that can help you lose weight. However, one of the biggest mechanisms, the big mover, in my opinion, is that they help us to become more insulin sensitive. What does that even mean? I think that probably most of us are insulin resistant. So if you're diabetic, you definitely are. If you're pre-diabetic, you're most likely insulin um, resistant as well. And most of us are probably on that, that path or have some sort of insulin resistance. All right, how is that getting in the way of losing weight? Well, you might relate to this. Um, I was doing all the right things. I was eating low calorie, I was in a deficit, I was, I was running, I was strength training, I was doing all the right things in the lifestyle and whatnot, and, and I just couldn't get the scale to move. It was extremely frustrating when you're like, well, I'm doing everything, putting in so much effort, and I'm not losing, I'm not losing weight, like what is going on? That was when I finally said, all right, fine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take one of these uh, GLP-1s, which was those impact didn't change anything and all of a sudden, boom, the scale starts moving. Because it made me more insulin sensitive. When you're insensitive, what happens is you eat something and your pancreas releases insulin to take the glucose from the food that you just ate and it basically, it's supposed to shove it into cells so that it gets used for energy and you move on with your life. But what happens is when you're insulin insensitive, 
the insulin gets released and your cells are going, uh -uh, I'm not, I'm not going to take in that glucose. So it sort of ignores the, the, the signal. And then your body releases more and more and more insulin to try to get that glucose because you have to, they have to get the glucose out. The body has to do that. And if it doesn't go into those cells, it gets stored as fat. So that's kind of the mechanism and what's going on when someone is like, well, I'm in a deficit, I'm eating low calorie, I can't really go that much lower. I mean, you could, but then you'd be starving. So yeah, could you eat 800 calories? Maybe, but that's gonna backfire you. It's gonna backfire in a heartbeat because you're gonna be so hungry. You might be able to do it for a day or two and then you know, you're know you gonna be ravenous and go off on the other side of it and start binge eating and just, eat any carb that you could possibly find because you're starving. So when, when you become more insulin sensitive, it allows the cells to open up. A great analogy is you're telling, let's say you're telling your kids, hey, clean your room or, you know, do the dishes, take the garbage out. And they're just sitting there like ignoring you. They're not listening. It's kind of what your cells are doing. They're just ignoring the signal. And then you start yelling louder and louder. Come on, come on guys, you know, do this thing and they just don't listen to you and that's kind of what your cells are doing. But if instead the first time you said, hey, can you take the garbage out? Your kids are like, oh, sure. <laughs> that's what this, this peptide does. So it allows the cells to open up and do something with that extra glucose so it does not get stored as extra body fat on you. Okay, one of the other key factors in these two peptides Studies have shown, and through these are through the studies, that when people have taken Ozempic or Wagovi, some semaglutide, the average weight loss is about 15% of their body weight. And when taking Terzepatide, Mangerno, or Zepbound, the average weight loss is 20%. So there's a big difference, you know, the, the terzepatide, again, you're working on two incretin hormones that are doing basically, you know, helping with the appetite and the gastric um, slowdown and creating more insulin sensitivity and decreasing inflammation and things of that nature. So you are potentially getting better results on that one. Keep in mind that there have been people that have amazing results taking Ozempic and Wagovi only. However, like me, I did start with that and then I went up to the highest dose, had great results, but then I just stopped. I got stuck and tried tweaking things and nothing worked. So that's when I eventually went over to take terzepatide and that kind of like got things moving again for me. So that could be one way you, you might want to start on the Wagovi or Ozempic. And if you get stuck somewhere and you're maxed out on your dose, you do have the option of flipping over. If you start on the Trisepatide, you know, you don't have that option. That's you just tight, you know, titrate up as you go along and, and that's it. Um, but that's not necessarily a negative either. So they're both great options. Um, now, the other key area in terms of deciding on these two, perhaps, are the side effects. Ozempic tends to have more negative side effects than the Mangerno or, or the Zepbound. So you people have reported uh, more gastrointestinal distress, um, getting like these sulfur burps, um, there's been other like negative things, fatigue. I, I had the fatigue actually in the beginning, although that could have been from lack of salt and electrolytes, as I found out along the way that could easily solve a lot of, um, fatigue issues. Um, but then the, the newer, you know, the newer, um, peptide, the terzepatide does have less side effects. So, um, the way I, the kind of the analogy I look at that is like, you might, drive a Honda Accord, great car, solid. It'll get you to your destination. Maybe a few bumps in the road because the suspension isn't great and you're gonna feel the road. And then you have, you know, your Mangerno. You got your Porsche, you're gonna 
you're going to get your, to your destination real fast, a lot faster than the Honda will get you. Suspension's amazing, so you're really not going to feel those bumps in the road or the side effects. Just kind of, with, you know, the both get you there. Uh, they're going to get you both great results, and, you know, you might have different experiences along the way. Now, moving on from this, the last one to talk about is the cost. So if your insurance covers both, then that's a beautiful thing. And then you, between you and your doctor, you could decide you know, which one might be better suited for you. If you're paying out of pocket, however, Ozempic is going to cost less than the Mangerno because it is the latest, greatest, and it is the dual um, peptide the dual agonist. So just keep that in mind. They're both, I think, if you're paying out of pocket, I think they're over $1,000 a month for the brand name. Another option could be getting the compounding uh, from a compounding pharmacy. You still need a prescription for it, but it is a lot less expensive than getting the brand name. If you are paying out of pocket, I've done both because I my insurance in the beginning covered Ozempic and then Wagovi. And then when I wanted to flip over to Mangerno, my insurance wasn't covering. So I went, did the compounding route, which at that time was way more expensive than it is today. I also did the raw peptide, um, which was a lot less expensive. That's a whole nother thing. Really effective though, they both really worked. Then my insurance kicked in and decided they were going to start covering, which was fabulous. And then I was able to get on to Mangerno and Zepbound, which I am on currently. And, and that was, uh, I was very fortunate for that. Okay, so key, uh, I'm gonna recap the differences as well as talk about the newest peptide around the corner that's in trials, which is super interesting. So again, in terms of weight loss percentages, Wagovi Ozempic, you're looking at an average of 15%. And Mangerno Zepbound is about 20%. Now you could accelerate that, and that also depends on you know how much weight you have to lose and what your starting weight is. But if you're tweaking your lifestyle habits, you're getting your sleep, you're lifting weights, you're um, modifying your nutrition to make it long-term sustainable, and you can adhere to that pretty much the rest of your life, throwing in some foods that you like as well, then you could also achieve a greater weight loss than the studies have shown. Now, there is a third one coming around the corner. Um, Eli Lilly also is making this one. It's called Retitrutide, and that one is in phase three clinical trials right now. They expect that to be done by the end of 2025, so potentially looking at 2026 when it's on the market. That one is a triple agonist. It has the GLP-1, it has the GIP, and it has glucagon, so it acts on three. Now the cool thing about retitrutide, it does all the things that terzepatide does, but the glucagon looks like it actually increases metabolism. It increases the fat burning. So while it's reducing your appetite and slowing things down and creating more insulin sensitivity, it's also increasing your metabolism so you're burning more calories at the same time, and that one's looking like it's about 25% uh, body weight loss. So that one looks pretty unbelievable. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that one. If you found that you like this video and you want to spread the word, please definitely share it with your friends. Give it a thumbs up, a comment. All of that helps the algorithm, helps me get out there a little bit more. And I would love to hear your experiences with these, um, the pros, the cons, like how much weight have you lost? Are you thinking about going on to one of these? Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are and I will see you in my next video. Stay strong.